Today on the Stingy Sailor, I'm going to demonstrate how to remove the lower unit from an outboard motor and service the water pump by replacing the impeller and the seals. I have my trusty Yamaha 4-stroke 8 horsepower outboard here mounted on a motor stand and I'm ready to take the lower unit off. First thing I need to do is disconnect the shift shaft on this engine there's a shaft that comes down from the control lever to here and attaches by a coupler to a lower shaft that goes down to the gears and shifts the output shaft from forward to reverse. So the first task is to disconnect those two shafts here at this coupler. I've already done that so it's loose. And then the next step is to simply remove the bolts that attach the lower unit casing to the upper shaft and pull the lower unit free. So I've already removed these bolts. It's ready to come out. Just work it a little bit and it should slide right on out. Now we can see the output shaft coming down from the engine, the water pump, and the lower unit casing. I'll take this over to the workbench, put it in a vise, and we'll be right back. So I've taken out the lower unit and I have it in a bench vise here so that I can work on it. And now here's the water pump. The impeller turns on the main power shaft here, pulls water in from the lower unit, up in through the pump, and then drives it up through a tube up through the upper end of the, the shaft to the engine. So now it's a matter of removing these four bolts so that we can take the top off of the pump, pull the impeller off, inspect it and replace it. What I wanted to show you here was maybe hard to see in the video but these four bolts are stainless steel. The lower unit casing is made of aluminum. If you've been following the blog I had a post where I discuss the dangers of dissimilar metals in contact with one another without some sort of a corrosion inhibitor and how easy it is for it to build up galvanic corrosion which is what happens when two dissimilar metals are together in the presence of an electrolyte soft water, salt water. So I've been working on these bolts and I finally got one to come out and I wanted to show you Look at all the galvanic corrosion on those threads. These are very difficult to pull out right now and I'm backing them out very slowly, about a sixteenth of a turn at a time, equally, and also soaking them with, with uh, some WD-40 to try and get down in the threads to loosen up this corrosion. But it's essentially glued the bolts into the lower casing. And so that's making it very difficult to pull these apart. You have to be very careful to not over torque these bolts they could snap off inside the casing and then we've got a very serious problem. Okay, so my luck didn't work out. I got three of the bolts out and was gradually working this last one back and forth a little bit at a time and sure enough it snapped off. So that's a problem for another day. Let's continue. So now that the bolts are removed, they're loose. We can pull the top end of the water pump off. Here's the impeller. There's an O-ring that seals the pump body down onto this plate. And now we can pull the impeller out. And it's actually not in bad shape. It was probably replaced relatively recently. Don't see any flat spots on the impeller blades. Don't see any cracks still pretty flexible so this whole job probably didn't need to be done as a matter of fact but I had no idea what the history of this motor was so rather than wait for the worst to happen I decided to service it now so we have replacements for the impeller, the o-ring this metal cup inside the pump body that can also get worn as dirt and grit get in there and uh, scratch it kind of like a cylinder 
or piston in a car. And now I'm going to remove this bottom plate. Fortunately, these two front bolts came out fairly easily. That would be just the luck. And now what we can do is remove this lock nut off of find the right wrench. There we go. Lock nut off of the lower shift shaft. So that I can get this retaining bracket off. And now this lower plate should remove. It's got a couple of pins that help index it. And it's not going to pass by the the woodruff key in the shaft here, so I'll have to pull that out. In the water pump service kit there is a replacement key. And of course this one's going to be difficult. So I'm going to work on that a little bit and get that out and then I'll be back. Okay, with a little bit of persuasion, the key came out of the keyway in the shaft there. Now we can remove this bottom plate up off the shaft. And you can see the wear, a little bit of rust, not too bad. We can clean that up. But more importantly, now we can deal with the snapped bolt here in the lower casing. That's going to be fun because we're going to have to drill it and then either with a left-handed drill bit or with a bolt extractor try and get that out after soaking it with some more solvent to hopefully loosen that up to where it will come out. Worst case scenario, we have to drill it out oversize, tap it, and put in an oversized bolt. Now we can also see the top seal on the lower unit. We can clean up the bottom of the shaft and hopefully get it all back in service for spring. Thanks for watching. Before I clean up the top cover to the lower unit and put the water pump back together, I want to show you an example of what can happen if you don't flush your outboard. Notice this recess in the top of the cover here. This channel that I'm pointing to is where the water comes up from down below right here through these little grates there's one on each side there's a channel runs all the way up through the bottom of the lower unit water gets pulled up into this cavity the the lower plate on the water pump covers this and you'll see this in the next segment as I put it all back together but this is where water basically sits inside your lower unit if you leave it in the water and if you do not flush it. You can see all of this corrosion that's gathered here in the top and that's how your water pump wears more, begins to get clogged and it's just generally not a good thing. So I'm going to pull this cover back off, clean all of this out as best I can and then we'll continue with reassembling the water pump. Okay, it's reassembly time finally for this lower unit off my 8 horsepower Yamaha outboard. We're putting the water pump back together. I've cleaned up the top plate for the lower unit that I showed you in the last scene. See it now? Got all the aluminum oxide off of that, cleaned up nice. So now we're ready to put it back together. I've got this gasket that seals the plate against the lower unit. Slide that down on here. And now the plate itself is ready to go on. Do. I've got this 
little o-ring that seals the shift shaft get it pressed into this little boss there and we'll ease the sun down Okay, now we've got two bolts hold the front of this cover down. And as you remember, when I disassembled it, pulled out two stainless steel bolts from there. And they came out pretty easily, didn't really have any galvanic corrosion on them, but just as a precaution, this time I'm going to reinstall them with some Marlu. To make sure they will come out just as easily, if not more easily, next time. in there finger tight for now. Next step I'm going to put a little bit of Teflon lubricant here on the top of this lower plate where the output shaft runs on the seal because from the cleaning process, it's the seal is kind of dry now, and I want to make sure that it starts out with a good wet seal. Okay. Next step is to start putting the replacement parts in. And here's the new bottom plate. Um, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the blog that accompanies this video yet, I have pictures there of the wear of the bottom plate, the impeller, and the top cover. And you can see the scoring in this old one. This new one is going to replace that. And sure enough, I put the bolts in too quickly. Let's pull these out. And slip that clear plate back on. step is to put a new woodruff key in the output shaft. Little tiny key here. Just gently tap it into place. Good. We'll check the fit here in a second. Next up is the new impeller itself. It sits on this keyway. And now, if you look carefully, you can see there's a keyway in one side of the impeller and none on the other. So that shows you which side of the impeller goes down. The side with the notch in this case goes down, fits over the Woodruff key. Just like that. Alright, next up is the, the body of the pump itself. 
This is just a plastic casting to which we're going to install first the replacement cup. This is the top of the water pump. This was also scored in the original. Notice there's a little tab punched in it. It's poking out out of the top here. If you look inside the pump, there's a little notch. So if we set this in so that the tab sits down in the notch, and we know we've got it lined up correctly. Okay, I got that cap inside of the pump body, and now I'm ready to put the O-ring in that seals it. There we are. O-ring seals the pump body down onto the bottom plate. Now before I set that on, I'm just going to add a little bit of Teflon grease inside here to help the impeller seat on startup. And to help the impeller blades get inside the pump body, I'm just going to press lightly as I press the blades in, press down on the pump body and rotate it help them ride up inside. There we go. Now it's ready to seat on there. Here we go. And the last step is to install the four new zinc plated bolts to replace the stainless steel ones that you saw in the first scene, the first episode, this first part of this video where there was all of this galvanic corrosion caused by the stainless steel against the aluminum. The new kit came with the zinc plated bolts instead, which should not be a problem, but I'm going to put a little Marlube on these as well just for a little extra insurance. After I tighten these down, the water pump is ready to go. And then all we have to do is reattach the lower unit to the upper shaft of the motor, just like we did when we took it off, except in reverse order. And it's ready to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned how you can service your own water pump and some of the pitfalls that you might run into and how to work out them. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time on the Stingy Sailor. For more information about this project or to find more practical, affordable, or just plain cool do-it-yourself projects, visit StingySailor.com, the number one Google website for DIY saleable restoration improvement without throwing your budget overboard.